Hey guys, welcome back. And actually, I'm back from my trip in Iceland, which you'll have seen in the last video, and I'm ready to crank out some awesome content for you guys in the new year. So this one is gonna be a four-parter, which I did one of those a while ago. Actually, it might not be four-parters, it might be five or six. We'll see how many videos I make from this, but it's gonna be a little series where I break down how to make a track in a specific style. And I've been struggling actually with the name for this kind of style, really. So I think sassy is quite a good word to describe how the sound is. Uh, it's kind of the stuff from Owen, Mickey, Olsvanger, Rosa Terenzi, D. Tiff, Mara, all those kind of artists. And, you know, it's got a bit of sass to it. It's got a bit of seductiveness in the vocals. It's got usually a bouncy bass line and some kind of broken drum elements. So I'm going to be taking you through how I'm approaching building a track in a similar style. So without further ado, let's get into it. <laughs> So you might recognize this as one of the tracks which I've written for my live set. As you can see, I've also started with the template that I created in the series. If you haven't seen any of those videos, then the link is in the description. But the template basically allows me to quickly start programming in drums using my most used kits, the 707, 808 and 909 core kits, while also having access to the same sends as my live set. So let's start with a classic house beat as the basis of our track. Kick on the one, open out on the three, and the claps doubling up with every beat. Now I've got a lot to fit into these videos, so I won't be explaining absolutely everything. But don't stress, because I've done quite a lot of that in previous videos anyway. For example, this is how I processed our 909 kick. But if you'd like to go deeper into my process, then check out this video that I put out. Now let's introduce a shaker, playing every 16th note. This brings a bit of energy and drive to the track, that although when mixed is quite subtle, really helps glue the beat together. To add some variation, let's hold down command and drag the velocity handle to set a deviation range. Notice also how I'm adding reverb and adjusting the levels of all of my elements as I go. There's no real rule or science being applied here, I'm just mixing the elements so that the levels sound good to my ears. Again, don't worry too much here, the time for really dialing in the mix comes towards the end of the process anyway. Okay, now I've got my basic beat, I'm going to introduce a bit of swing using the preset Swing Logic 1655. This will apply MIDI note adjustments at 16th note increments. The number to the right is the degree of swing being applied, with 50 meaning none and 75 being the max. Watch as the notes are adjusted as I apply the swing to our shaker. Now this might only seem like a small change, but it really helps emphasise the offbeat, giving the track some of the bounce and energy we're after. I wanted to give the kick a nice counterpoint with a strong offbeat, so I doubled up the clap with an 808 snare to give it some added punch rounding the sound off with an EQ8 to leave some room for the shaker. I've also applied a compressor to give the snares some more punch. The 909 gets a saturator, drum bus and EQ8 to shape the sound to my liking and have it sit more harmoniously in the mix by again cutting the extreme highs. Finally, the shaker gets some more movement with an auto pan and some stereo width. Now one of the main elements I've noticed in these house beats are the drum elements with tonality conga, toms, bongos for example, elements you can use to create these little sub melodies and motifs. So let's focus on that next. I'm going to use the 808 low conga and high conga, although the 909 and 707 also have some great options. Now for this we want to create a beat which plays as a counterpoint to our current drums, almost like an extra melodic line with a call and response. So let's plug in our high conga with a nice roll in the middle. Now the lower conga, which can be introduced to play in the gaps, making sure not to overlap with the kick to avoid any possibility of these lower frequency sounds clashing. Notice how there's no regimented patterns here, but rather a free-for-all of expressive notes being played to add some groove to our on-the-grid beat. Here, our two sections complement each other through their contrast, finding the balance between structure and intrigue. For this part, there's honestly no right or wrong way to program them and most of the time I find something good by trial and error. So if your congas and bongos aren't quite hitting right, just shift them around a bit until you have a rhythm which works for you and your track. You also have the option to tune these core kit drums, which I'd always recommend, so they fit with the other melodic elements in your track. From here, we've got a good basis for our drums, but that doesn't mean we'll stop tweaking them. In fact, we'll probably go back in and add some extra variation once we get a nice loop working. So check back in next time as I introduce the bass, lead sounds, and some additional synths, alongside the all-important vocal. I'll see you then.